Okay, hello everybody. Um, whoops, let me click play here because now my screen is stuck. Okay, hold on. Um, one moment. Ah, not letting me play the slides. Oh, there we go. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Josh Lim. I am with the Wiki Society of the Philippines. I'm currently based in Madrid, Spain, um, which is the reason why you see that it is actually nine o'clock. Uh, it's nearly ten o'clock in the morning here, um, and I actually really wish I could have been there in Singapore. Um, I usually give talks at Wikimania about topics related to the Philippines. So this year, I look forward to sharing with you a little story about Philippine diplomatic missions on Wikipedia and how you can write them too. This is actually a project that I've been working on for more or less the last 10 years now. Um, and it's really been an exciting journey, especially in the years since the pandemic started, where I really started really um, writing about um, diplomatic missions on Wikipedia. So as you can see, the title is Wikip uh, Wikipedia Diplomacy, precisely because it was through here that we really got engagement with the diplomatic community, um, especially with the Department of Foreign Affairs of the Philippines and some of their diplomats in some of the missions around the world. This actually, you see here in the first slide, is the Philippine Embassy in Madrid, um, which was open, which was established in 1951. But let's get on with the show here. So I started writing Wikipedia articles about Philippine diplomatic missions in 2013, and this wasn't really um, a thing that just, you know, it, I didn't suddenly decide one day I'm going to write about Philippine embassies and consulates. It just started off originally as a small project initially to write about my time in Poland. I studied in Poland um, between 2011 and 2012, um, enjoyed my time with, Wiki, with Wikipedia Polska, for example, um, while I was there. And then when I came back from Poland, um, after studying, after in, um, integrating myself with the various Wikipedia communities in Central and Eastern Europe, I figured, you know, let's write about some things about the relationship between the Philippines and Poland. And so I ended up writing about this. This is the Philippine Embassy in Warsaw. Um, this is actually not the picture that I took. The picture that I took is on common. So you can, um, you can take a look at it there. This is what the embassy looks like as of, I believe, 2019. Um, but it's been here since 2009. And so this article that you see here on the left, this is what the article originally looked like. It doesn't look like this anymore. And the reason for that is because um, from 2013, when I first started writing, when I first wrote this article, there was no template for how to write about diplomatic missions. Um, and so there were various ways to write about different embassies and consulates. And in fact, you still see that... Um, you still see that um, disparate way of writing about this type of article um, throughout Wikipedia. So for example, um, embassies of the Philippines are written differently from let's say embassies of the United States, embassies of Ukraine, embassies of Indonesia, which actually is one of the templates that they use for writing this article. So on September 24th, 2013, when I first wrote the article on the Philippine embassy in Warsaw, my template for writing about the um, Philippine diplomatic missions was really U.S. and Indonesian embassies and consulates. And the reason for that is because at the time, those were the countries with arguably the most comprehensive or at least the most structured way of writing um, articles about embassies and consulates. Um, and in fact, before this article was written, there were only articles about three other Philippine diplomatic missions. And so for context, you only had one-off articles, and they weren't that good, to be honest. They were not particularly consistent. They were not well-referenced, nor did they have structured data that we could then import. Well, then again, you know, Wikidata wasn't really a thing. and Well, it was only starting to become a thing in the early 2010s. And so they, these articles weren't really that good, to be honest. And which, are, um, which embassies and consulates then am I referring to? I'm specifically referring to these three missions. The image on your left, this is the Philippine Center. This is home to the Philippine Consulate General in New York. And actually, the Philippine Consulate General in New York City deserves to have its own article because it has a history. So for example, the Philippine Center, as you see here, this um, was not the original home of the Philippine Consulate General. Before the Philippine Consulate in New York was based in this building, it was actually based in a mansion that Imelda Marcos, the wife 
the mother of the current president of the Philippines and wife of the former dictator, Ferdinand Marcos Sr., bought this expensive house uh, on Park Avenue. And that was actually bought with, with money that was stolen from the Filipino people. And to make it look legitimate, they based the Philippine consulate there. And so whenever Imelda would be in New York City, she would host lavish parties in that house. The property has since been sequestered and sold off, um, and the proceeds returned to the Philippine government. Um, but right now, there isn't even an article about the Philippine Consulate General in New York City. It's one of the projects that I want to work on. Because you have the article about the Philippine Center, and it's actually written by a Wikipedian based in New York City. Following that, we have the Philippine Embassy in Washington, D.C., um, this article was written by a Wikipedian in DC, and it was part of a project that they had on writing about embassies and consulates to the United States. Um, so this article is not even particularly structured. It's one of the articles that I have not even touched, but um, I look forward to working on that as well. Currently, it's just a long series of paragraphs about the history of the embassy, there's not much about the building itself. The building was built in the 1990s. And so there would be a lot of information about how this um, building came about. Um, and then at the bottom is the Kudan. This is the former Philippine embassy to, to, um, to Japan to, in Tokyo. This is now the residence of the Philippine ambassador. And so for many, many years, the link Philippine embassy in Tokyo, um, embassy of the Philippines, comma, Tokyo, actually linked to this building because there was no impetus to write about Philippine embassies and consulates in Japan. And so uh, not, not until 2021 when I wrote the article. Today, in fact, look, all the countries in blue that you see on the map here, these are countries with Philippine diplomatic missions, embassies, consulates, both or some, uh, or in the case of Taiwan that you see there in light blue, um, the Philippine, um, it's the Taiwan, um, it's the, I'm sorry, it's the Manila um, Economic um, Office in Taiwan. So the countries in red that you see here, these are all countries with Wikipedia articles regarding their, um, relating to their embassy or consulate. Um, and much of this work, outside of the three that I mentioned earlier, were articles that I had written um, starting in 2013. So I wrote about the embassy in Poland in 2013. For several years, I didn't really do anything. Then I figured, okay, I'll start again. Wrote the article on the Philippine embassy in Tel Aviv in 2018 when I was there for the Glam Wiki conference. And then um, throughout the years, started writing more about Wiki, um, Philippine embassies and consulates and then that really took off during the pandemic. And then countries in light blue, um, these are articles that I had started writing. So the Philippine embassy in New Delhi, the Philippine Embassy in Brasilia, the Philippine Embassy in Vienna, and then I look forward to writing more as time goes on. It really is dependent on the, um, it really is dependent actually on the um, resource and on the sources that are available, especially online. Whoops. And in fact, now several of these articles have made it to the English Wikipedia's Did You Know section, three consulates general and seven embassies. And so what we see here is that a lot, um, we try to promote these articles. And in fact, a lot of these embassies and consulates have very interesting stories to tell. So for example, the Philippine embassy in Baghdad, the diplomats there agreed, let's all, we, we will agree to a suicide pact. We will kill each other. We will die together if ISIS decides to invade the embassy at the height of the war between Iraq and the Islamic State in 2015 and 2017. The Philippine Embassy in Berlin, one day the uh, senator, Frank, Franklin Drillon, said, wait a minute, why is the embassy on top of a supermarket? I see sausages. This is embarrassing. And so that was quite funny. The Philippine Embassy in Cairo, wait a minute. We, put, we, we named an ambassador in 1960, but we have no idea when the embassy was actually established. Normally, it's when the ambassador was appointed, so it's 1960, right? Um, and then the Philippine Embassy in Buenos Aires, um, it was the former building, they have since moved. It used to be a house, a hotel, a retirement home. Um, a, a former Philipp a diplomat that was once based there, I actually, we actually removed all this information because he said it was embarrassing to the consulate. It's like, no, Wikipedia is not censored because he told me, oh, wait, it's now, um, it's now a brothel, so we should remove it. Yeah, no, we're not going to do that. I did not put that it's a brothel because there's no reliable source that points to that accordingly. Um, and so a lot of these consulates and um, embassies have interesting stories to tell. And these stories deserve to be put on Wikipedia. 
therefore, since start um since I actually started working on these articles, I've branched out to other languages too. I am an active editor on the Spanish Wikipedia. I'm one of the few Filipino Wikipedians that actually write in Spanish. And so we branched out into writing about articles in the in that language. And mostly right now about um embassies of the Philippines and other Spanish-speaking countries. Eventually, and then the one in Bahrain, which is the most recent one that I wrote, because someone decided to translate it. So um Moving on from that, you know, I hope that this is something that will inspire other Wikipedians to write articles about their diplomatic missions using the structure that I will elaborate below. So we follow a standard template for writing wiki, um, diplomatic missions about of the Philippines. So there's always an info box. The info box should always have, um, it could be a template, template info box diplomatic mission, which is for the English Wikipedia. For um for the Spanish Wikipedia, it's Ficha Misión Diplomática um, or something similar. The mission's name should always be in the language of your wiki and the official languages of the sending and receiving countries. So here you see the Philippine Embassy in Tel Aviv it has the name in English, which is an official language of the Philippines and the language of the wiki. The name of the mission in Filipino, the national language of the Philippines and the name of the mission in Hebrew, the, the official language of Israel. If there is a shield, which is normally the case with many diplomat with many countries, they have a special logo or, or um, coat of arms for their embassies or their consulates, it should be in the info box. And of course, a picture of the mission where available. The lead paragraph, in this case, it's always the embassy of, the, the embassy of country in city is the diplomatic mission of the country sending the mission to the country receiving it. And then some small information, it was open in this year, it's located here, maybe near some major landmark. Um, a, a section about the history of the embassy or consulate where one is available, whatever you can find in um, reliable sources. Usually this will be old newspaper clippings. Um, and I thank the Wikipedia library for giving me access to um, uh, newspapers.org, for example, which has been a goldmine of information, particularly for Philippine diplomatic missions in the United States, um, and also um, the Internet Archive's own library, which has been wonderful for this type of resource, and also a section on staff and activities. Normally, it's the ambassador, who they are, who they've been appointed by, and when they were received by the host country. Um, one thing that you might want to know is that an ambassador is not an ambassador until their credentials have been received by the host country, meaning the president actually accepts the credentials from the ambassador. Usually this can be several months after their credentials have been received. So be make sure to look at that accordingly. I had a minor dispute with an editor who says, oh, the Philippine ambassador to Indonesia is actually the ambassador because they were named as such by the government. But they, their credentials are not received until June of this year even though they were appointed in September of last year. So something that you want to keep in mind. And then a couple of interesting things that the mission does. So for example, the Philippine Embassy in Tel Aviv is actually the mission responsible for um, all the other ASEAN countries which don't have an, um, an embassy in Israel. So for example, if you're Malaysian, go to the Philippine Embassy, they will help you, as was the case in 2010. Occasionally, if there's a lot of information about the building itself, as I mentioned earlier, there is, it would make sense to have a section about the chancery, the building where the embassy or consulate is located. And that adds character and depth to the article, more than just a brief mention of the history, because this actually shows you that this mission is quite historical. So for example, there was a long history about how the Philippine embassy in Tokyo was built with Japanese war reparations, or how the Philippine embassy in Berlin, they originally wanted to buy the property um, that where um, Jose Rizal, the national hero of the Philippines, wrote the um, wrote Noli Metangere, his seminal work. The building was not for sale, so they couldn't buy it. This picture actually was taken by um, Eugene Villar, who is a thief, who's actually in the audience. So if you're looking for Filipino Wikipedians to interact with, I highly recommend you talk to him. Now, because there is no standard way of writing articles about diplomatic missions, the goal of this project is really to provide a comprehensive template that others can emulate for their countries. Because these articles deserve the care and respect that we can give them. These are representatives of our country abroad. And so if we're able to give them the care and respect that we can on Wikipedia, it actually helps elevate um, not just what people perceive of our countries, um, especially in East and Southeast Asia, but also how um, it also gives inform interesting information that then people can then um, look back to. 
And in fact, this led me to getting a Barnstar star on the English Wikipedia because people do appreciate the work that we put in to these articles. Um, people notice that, you know, oh, a lot of the articles on the English Wikipedia about diplomatic missions are quite stubby. So it's nice to see more extensive coverage. And so if we're able to really put in the effort to do the research required, a lot of this information is actually available online, or you can reach out to the Department of Foreign Affairs of your country um, or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of your country to get this information. And this is information that um, would be beneficial for anyone to know about. Let's say if they want to know more about, oh, this I, want, I need to go to the embassy of this country in my city, they will very likely go to the Wikipedia article. It will tell them where they need to, where it is, what, what is the mission about, and more about the country and how they interact with the country that the embassy um, or consulate is located in. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat. Terima kasih. Uh, um, muchas gracias. And let's give our diplomatic missions the love and treatment that they deserve. Um, I do only have three minutes left in my presentation, so in my presentation time, so I am open to any questions that you may have. Um, and I will, um, I will stop sharing my screen. I will briefly open. Um, I actually closed uh, um, Eventier, so I will check if you have any questions on Eventier, um, I will be able to answer them as well. Hi Josh, um, Ramzi from Indonesia. Um, actually, Hi really... Ramzi, long time no see. <laughs> yeah, long time no see. I uh, really appreciate um, Ophilo uh, diplomatic nerds doing this all days. Um, um, I'm just curious, I understand there is no uh, freedom of panorama in the Philippines and I understand that uh, an embassy of a country is a like a, its own country abroad. Are you concerned yes. with the copyright status of these embassy photos that, that you took, um, all the excellent photos Actually, of the comments? Actually, the worry there is not the Philippine lack of freedom of panorama, and okay. I personally think we should have them. I know Johnny um, Alegre was talking about it yesterday. Um, actually, the worry was the country that's hosting the embassy. So the position of Commons is that it has to be, it doesn't matter if, it, if the country has freedom of panorama, the sending country, the receiving country has to have it too. So for example, the Philippine embassy in Jakarta, there was a picture, and I got that from a Philippine government um, image, which means it's public domain, but because Indonesia doesn't have freedom of panorama, Thomas said, sorry, it can't be there. Um, I'm very likely going to upload it back to the English Wikipedia, just so there is a picture. But yes, freedom of panorama can be an issue um, in countries that don't have it. Yeah, thank you. You're very welcome. I wish I could be there. <laughs> um, any other questions? Thank you very much, Josh. Thank you for your session. All right. All right. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. And I look, and forward, I look forward to seeing, seeing all of you, all of you um, when the opportunity comes. Thank you for attending my presentation.